sooner. Yeah. I think this sums, sums up. Most definitely something's up. What, what do you mean something's up? Meaning I don't think that they, like, like I'm saying, if they come back with the, like, the results before, like, anything oh. before Friday, then, like, they didn't, they didn't do their, the right due diligence of counting everybody's vote and, and actually, like, looking at things, because there's no way that they got all those mail-ins. Millions and millions of advanced votes, right? Yeah. yeah, there's no way. That's a good point. I can't believe as many people as have already been reported voted for Trump. I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Scares. Yeah. Me to death. They're out there. <laughs> oh yeah. They are out. Most definitely. Yeah. What what do you think that a Trump victory would mean for America and for you? It means I got to get a, a lot more personally. It means I got to get a lot more focus and know, and like just be be on my p's and q's and know what I kind of want because I mean, he's not gonna make it easy for me. So I got to start really focusing and clutching yeah. down, getting ready, getting prepared. But That's really for good America, approach. Yeah. But for America, I really can't say. <laughs> I really can't say because it's like it, it might, it's going to be some uprisings probably if he wins. So it's going to be a lot of couple, probably a couple clashes between, you know, Democrats and Republicans or whatever, Trump supporters or whatever you want to call them for at least probably about two weeks. Yeah, I think that's likely. That's it. And that's scary. Yeah. The Have you heard of the, the Trump trains? The, the, have you heard about that Trump trains on the highway? So yeah. I, live, I live in Shavley. What was it, Sunday? And I'm just getting on the highway and I'm like, What's going on? Because this is very, tra very rarely traffic on on a Sunday. Yeah. I get on the highway. I'm like, hold up. <laughs> I was like, am I in a line of Trump supporters? And it's like there's mm. six big old trucks, like big F-350s with just like six flags hanging, like six flags, three on each side of the truck with yeah. big Trump, Trump flags just flying. I'm like, is this serious right now? <laughs> like, is this serious right now? Like this is yeah like, yeah it's serious yeah like that's that's wild like that's was that's what I was saying like I know for sure if if that's how how they're coming before the election can only imagine what's going to happen post election because yeah a lot of hectic things uh, it's very interesting that those people are not uh, bothered by the police for being in the roadway man. Whereas Man. black protesters or Black Lives Matter protesters are forbidden from being in the roadway. Yeah. Wonder what that's about. <laughs> yeah. It's that. yeah. <clears throat> Very scary. Very. And like the but also, cause uh, my I'm in my internships, like I've uh, just kind of been learning them about you know like the business side of Louisville, and uh, I went to an an event called uh, Glide Louisville, which is like Greater Louisville Incorporated, and it had all of the top businesses of Louisville in it, like you know the Brown Foremans, like all of the Bourbons and uh, Humanas, like the the top, I think it's like the top fifty businesses in Louisville, and the mayor was there. And they were just talking about, you know, like everybody, like the big thing in Louisville right now is revitalizing the West End and trying to, you know, make it better and get like more wealth down there for the black people, as they were mm -hmm. trying to say. But like in one of my classes at Simmons, there's a fellow named uh, there's a teacher, Josh Poe. I don't know if you ever heard of him. No, I don't know. He's a he's a white, he's a white guy. He's a he's a white guy and he's an activist. And he's yeah. like He's pure about his his meanings and everything he does, but he was, uh, I had his class like 
last semester or maybe the semester before, but he was telling, like, teaching us already about, like, what's going on in Louisville specifically, like, politically-wise and what's, like, what's about to happen and telling us about how the whole revitalizing of the West is coming. And there's a, uh, uh, somebody else, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. But there's a, there's a company called One West who is literally buying up all the commercial property around yeah. 18th, uh, 18th and Broadway, you know, across the street from the new YMCA. Yes. And the whole, like, you know, from Broadway, from 18th and Broadway down yes. west, and just like in general, any commercial property, they're looking to buy it all up. And this yes. is, they're supposed to be a nonprofit organization, like most. And but they're they're doing it for profit because they're they're saying they're revitalizing, but they're taking all of this the the main property and buying it up and causing everybody else around them who's barely even paying for their like affording the rent and their their land property now and is just making it go up. And I and I'm just saying all of this because like that's that's where this is headed. Like with with Trump if Trump comes into office, like they're really going to start start pushing it and like trying to get black people like away from downtown, like that's what I really feel like they're going to- Well, I can speak for One West. That's not their motivation. That's not- the They make, there is, is their mo that One West is buying property so that black businesses can be, have a presence in West Louisville. Now See, there may be um, some properties that has to be bought up that's not up to par because gentrification is happening. And if yeah. we don't get our if we don't get our part in it, then we get kicked out of the West Louisville. That's what's happening. Yeah. But I took a tour with them. Are you are you a part of the uh, are you on the board with them? I, no, I'm not on the board. And I'm very interested in working intricately with West One West, but I I did a tour. They they did a tour back last summer, last spring. And I'm talking about the, 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 the ownership of black business is so important. And that's an organization that has the funding to do what individuals can't do. I mean, I'm talking about, they're talking about putting uh, storefronts, condos, just like um, uh, Nulu. Nulu. Absolutely, but it's black owned. But it's black I, was, owned. I was in a room with them and see like they was they was trying to like everything you just said is very true. But I mean my, my hard thing with them is that the, the owner, like the ownership, like you're saying, is a lot of them is not from from either Louisville or from West Louisville. Even like I'm talking even the black, the black well, leader of like they so like they're it, it kind of it's kind of hard for me to, to see if what they're saying is pure or if or if they're just actually doing it for dollars like you know like anyone else like you just say yeah. like I'm, I'm doing this to like i'm doing this for profit but i'm also looking to help and but they always say we're just looking to help which is not which is not true at all it's a it's a lady light-skinned lady that used to work for one west I believe she she either got fired or she quit and started her own thing uh mm -hmm. She's it's like forty and one something. Mm -hmm. It's a, we we can talk on that. We we can yeah. There's yeah because we can, yeah, because I, we, can we can yeah. talk on that most definitely. Yeah 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 because and and just to real quick real quick, um, is there anybody in West Louisville right now that can? No. You said they're not from West Louisville. Well, you know all the the white people that are buying up everything. They're not from West Louisville, people, but they're coming with they're with coming, power yeah. and they're buying up everything. Yeah, that's what that's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. Like, what's gonna? How do we feel like with if Trump becomes like if his second term comes? Like, what what's what do you? How do you feel Ooh. about America? Like, what what do you Ooh. feel next coming in America? Yeah, and, we and we have to we have to bind together. We can't afford to allow a wedge of misunderstanding or anything to divide us because that's what they're counting on. They yeah. want us out. They want us lynched. They want us locked up. They want us dead. You got to know that. Yeah. And we don't, we can't afford, like you and I, we can't afford to be at odds. We have to come together. We have to say, okay, I understand your, your side and your side. How can we come together and make it stronger? Because they are coming after us. Our yeah. property, everything. Yeah. 
everything. The Trump administration for me means lynchings. Yes. I, I, I was, I was uh, thinking about this class this morning and I just hated to even face you guys with this, the, the trend toward Trump that's going on right now. I go, yeah. oh, it's, this is the worst possible thing. Yeah, yeah. For, for for our sisters and brothers in the black community. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's for sure. And um, I mean, Kanye West got so many votes. Like people are so ignorant. That's nothing. That's ignorance. Yeah. And he was put on the ballot just to to split the vote. Yeah. <laughs> that's exactly why he was put on the ballot. I believe that Amy McGrath also was put on that. I do. I don't know. I could be wrong, but I just feel like. Uh, Cory Booker was so close and he would have made such a, 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 oh, yeah. a significant yeah. change. Yeah. So so the, we still have to build our power, uh, young brother. We still have to build our economic power, what we don't have. And this is um, a start. What, what West want, and I don't know all the details, intricate stuff. I'm sure there's always room for negativity and greed and all of that but we have to start somewhere. Did you, uh, do you know who Josh Poe is? Did you? Josh. Josh Poe, white, it was a young white teacher, Simmons, taught like a, like a community. No, community. Uh -uh, no I never, I uh -uh, hadn't met him. I had to, I had to send you what, which, what the name of his actual class though, but you should take his class. Like if he's <laughs> teaching with Simmons, he's yeah. a great teacher, great oh, teacher. Okay. Cool. He's great. Well, cool. It's, it, there, there is the the trend has been for the white folks to tell the West End what they ought to do to make the West End better. Yeah. And that's no, it's got to be. Yeah. What do you, you you've got the creativity, you've got the wisdom, you've got the experience, you can do this. You don't have the the capital, the financing for it. Right. That's but right. You, it's got to be you guys in charge, not us white folks in charge. Right. Because it's not our community. Right. It's not our lot. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah, that's... I face a very different, a scary and probably dangerous future under a Trump for you next four years, but it's not as scary and dangerous as yours. Right. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah, it's so true. Uh, I'm, I, I fear for my children major yeah. in a major way yeah. their futures you know uh my my uh, ex-husband he's a trump supporter <laughs> and he doesn't understand that your daughters you know my baby girl who's waiting to get into medical school right now is saying so where does this lead me i mean yes i am well educated but still i have to manage myself underneath this Right. way of thinking right. this ideology is just mm -hmm. yeah it's crazy pure white supremacist well dear hearts uh shall we spend a little time talking about buddhism while we're here <laughs> <laughs> it's very, it, it might fit very nicely yeah because Buddhism is about suffering. Yes. And how do you move away from suffering and make life more meaningful? Yes. <clears throat> um, so yeah, that's 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 the deal. Yes. Yeah. They have their own very Asian perspective on that, and you don't have to buy all of the specific. Uh, stuff that goes with it like reincarnation and karma and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> but i think there's some real there's some real stuff there that really does not is not uh fits nicely with christianity about suffering and getting away from suffering yes so let's let's talk about that yes <laughs> and i am recording so i can that, that so the other eight, nine people in this class might get a chance to see this. I don't know. Anyway, uh, and Gary's listening in. He's on the bus. 
Um, <clears throat> so, um, so how I was thinking, starting with how Buddhism is different or similar to Hinduism. What kind of things uh, connect? Because Buddha was oh here comes here comes Tay. Buddha was uh, an Indian Hindu, um, a Brahmin, and so forth. But Both what, what, what beliefs from Hinduism carried over, and what's different? Like the the belief of like meditation, peace. Yeah. All right, what else? And we'll talk some more about meditation in, later on in this class. Morning, Tay. Hey, Good morning. Good morning, sir. We're just now getting started talking about Buddhism. Perfect timing yes. on your part. Okay. What else? Yes, the, the cycle of lives. The what? That whole cycle of lives. Yeah. What's the what's the word for that in both of those religions? Oh, I can't read my own notes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a problem. Yes. Starts with an R. Oh. Oh my goodness! It's chicken scratch. Mm. I don't know that one. I'll give it to you. Reincarnation. Oh, oh, I was looking for a, a different word. <laughs> you were thinking of something else? I was. I was thinking that maybe it was um, a specific name. But yes, reincarnation. <laughs> Can I ask a question real quick? Is reincarnation yes. and cor and coronated? Is it like the same thing? In in incarnated? Yeah, yes. it's, it's being, the same same basic uh, set of words. Same set of okay. meaning, right? Okay. So, just, so yeah, in Christianity we talk about the incarnation, which is God becoming in Jesus, in in that body. Mm -hmm. For the Hindus and the Buddhists, what does reincarnation mean? Is it like your soul? Yeah. And what Coming happens? Back. Mm -hmm. Coming yeah. back. Coming back. Your soul migrates from when one your body past life into your next life based off yeah. of karma. Yeah. yeah. And and the decision making about that is karma, right? K A R M A. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Which is the law of cause and effect. You do good. You, you reap good. If you do bad, you reap bad. Yes. Um, and, and, and the soul, S-O-U-L, in, in American language, English is, is the A-T-M-A-N in yeah. Hinduism and Buddhism. Mm -hmm. um, has its own life of its own. Um, so those things are all very similar. Mm -hmm. um, what are the differences between Hinduism and Buddhism? Well, speaking of the soul, um, Buddhism believes that the soul uh, dies basically at death. It's no longer. Um, not there, it, yeah, it, it says, it, believe the soul is no more than a bundle of, of experiences which evaporate at death. Hmm. Yeah, I That's, saw that, and I'm not sure how, how that fits with the reincarnation business. Well, I was just speaking about this. I know, I, I, that was kind of... That doesn't quite fit, does it? it I, I, there was, yeah, in my mind, I was like, okay, now I'm, I'm, I've read that. And I think that made me uh, sort of question that whole, the, the life cycle, because they still say, I mean, there's a point where you reach nirvana. Yeah. But okay, the never ending cycle of life, endless wandering. And then they talk about nirvana being a place of coolness. Uh, flames of passion and greed have been extinguished. Right. 
Uh, but good. yeah, that the soul part I, that that was kind of left me hanging. Yeah, at that point at Nirvana, that's where the soul just you know, disappears, become evaporates into the oneness of all being of all universe. Okay, yeah. so maybe that's the correlation with. Yeah, I think so, because because okay. with with reincarnation, the soul is reborn again into some other. Uh, some other life yes until you reach enlightenment and then then and the description was i don't know whether it was in keen or someplace they used a fire kind of a or a, a lamp and but yeah. somebody said it's kind of like where does the flame go when you blow out a match right it's gone <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. And that's the sense of when complete enlightenment is reached in Buddhism, that is fully um, detached from all all the you know the desires and, and concerns of life, <clears throat> then one is completely you you don't you don't need my I don't need my soul i don't need myself anymore mm -hmm. i am part of everything it is it, 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 yes it's yes. not a bad notion of life after death in my in my heretical yes. mind don't mm -hmm. tell my christian friends that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyway that's yeah that's that's how that works exactly yeah yeah uh, yeah. Is is Buddhism a theistic religion or an atheistic or a polytheistic? A polytheistic. It's, uh, a, it's a trick question, but it's in it's talked about in Keen. No, I don't believe so. I mean, it's almost polytheistic, and then Buddhism had um, more like an eightfold path in their scriptures. And they had like the middle way as far as the nirvana you were speaking with. Yes, yeah, so more than like thought. Buddhism didn't have like the whole little soul aspect that you were speaking of. And, and so, where is God in that day? Uh, that's the question yeah. about theism. So do they do they actually worship or pray to God? Yes, I don't think so. Because they talk about Buddha being a teacher, not a god. It's kind of it's like a, a way of life. It's, it's a, a way of life. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's more like a spiritual belief rather than uh, an embody of a person like Christianity who focuses yeah. on like the Father, the Son. Yeah. Right. Right. They sort of know that those gods of Hinduism are there. Yes. And uh, Buddha, the, his experience, <clears throat> the experience with Brahman, the, the high god of Hinduism. Yes. And yet, for the rest of his life, I think it was maybe as in, in Armstrong uh, rather than in Keen, he refused to discuss with his disciples about the existence of gods. Doesn't matter. He says, he refused to even discuss what Nirvana was like. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. You've got to live your life mm -hmm. now and completely detach yourself from all of the attachments and desires mm -hmm. and expectations of life. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. It's amazing, but reading that, I got a some, I got a sense of calm. I got a sense of self-control. Like as I was reading that, I was really ingesting the thought process of detaching because everything in life is a, is uh, encompassed with suffering. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I can incorporate that in my day to day because that's really I, what it is. It's not necessarily a a God thing, mm -hmm. but a way of life thing. That's that summarizes it nicely. Yeah. So did you catch the fourfold, uh, the, I mean, the noble truths, the four noble yes. truths? Mm -hmm. 
to write them. There I go again. Can't read my writing. Oh, yes. All, all life involves suffering. Right. The cause of suffering is... The cause of suffering is craving for life, pleasure, and money. Right. Or what I call just desire. Desire, yes. Yeah. And then uh, to eliminate the craving, uh, we'll end the suffering. Yeah. So if eliminate craving or desire. Yes. And then they talked about the middle way between, is it our sit? Narcissism and Hinduism is the only way to remove the craving. And I did not research those two yeah. entities. I didn't get that far. Asceticism is the religious belief that I have to completely deny myself of all worldly pleasure. And a lot of Christian uh, devotion over the, from especially in the, in the early years of middle ages was about completely, you know, going off into the desert and, you know, pretending like you don't need anything mm -hmm. um, and having only God in your life. Uh, hedonism was, was the other word you looked at. Yes. And hedonism was the Greek notion that life was short, you just had all the pleasure and, and then all the needs and wants that you should have. Let's just live life and enjoy it and eat all the food and drink all the brews and booze and love whoever you want to love. And, you know, you know. Uh, okay. so somewhere in between that, Buddha said, mm -hmm. is probably, so it's okay to be comfortable. It's okay to take care of your body while you're in it. Mm -hmm. But don't get so attached to it that I think this is the only thing in life that counts. Yeah. I'm sorry, I've got an infection in my finger. I'm only focusing on that right now. Mm -hmm. I, I get real connected with that. <laughs> or wherever there's pain or wherever there's yes. whatever's bugging me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's the, that's the noble truths. And that really sums it up pretty good. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, those are good principles, life principles. Yeah, they really yeah. are. Like anything in excess is not good. It's the same. Yeah, for me, I, I read a, a Buddhist leader who uses instead of desires or cravings, he uses the word expectations. Mm. Part of part of my a lot of my suffering for me is because I expect something, mm -hmm. cool. and then it doesn't turn out like I expected, and then I'm miserable. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the suffering comes not just from the expectation, but not being able to really put that expectation in perspective or to get detached from that expectation. I've got to let that expectation go. So I think I should be the perfect teacher. Well, I'm not. I sometimes even forget to turn on the record machine. <laughs> but I expect myself to be perfect. And then I feel bad when I don't. And that's suffering. But if I can let go of that sense of that's, that's the self I want for me, or the life I want for me, or the whatever, uh, that I don't get. I don't get the election result I wanted, for example. Okay. Uh, I, this isn't the way I want my country to be. And I'm okay. so tied to that that I can't see any other way out of it. Or I can put my sense into here's what is. And I will just flow with whatever is. Um, that's, that's sort of that middle way. Wow. You just described me to the T. <laughs> Are you you're doing that? Good for you. Oh. 
We we should be sitting at your feet, Paul. That's good. <laughs> oh my God. You just described me to the T. I'm over here taking deep breaths and breathing and try to exhale. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's good. Tell us more oh. how you do that. How did you come to that? How do I at, what's the question? You you said that that letting go of your expectations and, and letting it go. How do you do that? How, how well, that's the, that's the problem. You describe the part of me that can't. I'm have I have issue. Oh, you have with heart that heart. Yeah. being that perfect, being that you okay. know, and I hold a lot of anxiety with things not turning out the way that I thought they should. Right. So yeah, I'm I'm on that's that's bad. I haven't set. figured it out. <laughs> I thought you told me you were enlightened. I no, <laughs> I need the help. <laughs> cool. All right. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's me. Um, yeah. Well, it's so, good to know you're not alone. <laughs> I know. I know. And including, I have to let go of the sense that I'm alone. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. I have to let go, detach, let go. Yes, let go. Ease detach. up on myself, ease up on the world. Um, find a sense that there's a there's a way of living this that may, might work. <clears throat> By the way, I, um, a, a quote from Barack Obama has been getting me through this. Uh, this time, he said, uh, there's all kinds of stuff that's discouraging, but I haven't given up hope mm -hmm. because, he said, I never believed that progress goes in a straight line. Mm. So I don't see the world going the way I want it to. But it, that doesn't necessarily mean it won't eventually come back around to that. It's just not there now. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's the way of good letting. Stuff. It's good stuff. Hmm. Good stuff. So there's one other piece of this Buddhism thing that we haven't talked about, and that's the notion of <laughs> compassion. Uh, Buddhists are uh, <laughs> very concerned about each other, about other people, about the, those who are suffering. There is a sense of compassion even for oneself. And, one's, and one lives one life. That, and that was a piece of the genius of the Buddha. He spent that long, those three days in, a, in an ecstatic, ecstatic experience of you know the way the universe could be or is and he's there's a part of him wanted to stay there this is great i can just kind of live here this is wonderful i could just pass right on into nirvana and he was encouraged by his inner spirit and who knows what to say no i've got to go back and teach other people and help other people and help relieve suffering with others in the world. <clears throat> so that's that that piece of compassion for for others is a huge piece of Buddhism. Um, that's it's in uh, Christianity and Muslim stuff, but it's not as it's not as strong. It seems to me there's lot other forces and other thoughts in those religions that. <clears throat> That, but compassion. I don't know. Have you all gotten to know, heard about the Dalai Lama? You. He came to Wuvu like what last year? Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could have seen him. What do you know about him? Isn't he like the the spokes spokesperson or like the he's like the the main priest of the uh, Buddhist? Yeah, he he's the head of the, yeah. the of Tibetan Buddhism from Tibet. Mm -hmm. um, 
they that they believe that he is the reincarnation of their great leader when the previous Dalai Lama died they went looking for the baby in who into his whom his soul passed and that was the, the man we now know as the Dalai Lama who's now in his 80s I think um, and so they trained him up and prepared him and he has become this amazing spokesperson for Buddhism and for peace and for compassion and for in understanding between lots of religions. Um, he is, he has the most, he's the most kind. He has this great sense of humor. He has, and as I understand it, he's pretty much embodied the best of Buddhism. It's really loved, it's lovely to see. So you might look up a video of, of his, some of his speeches or whatever. Um, he was uh, he, he was a good friend of um, of um, oh the Archbishop in South Africa who my seventy six year old brain just lost <clears throat> anyway the, they who's clearly a Christian Episcopal priest. Um, and they they are dearest of friends, and they get together every, just a couple of times in their lives. But they, it's almost like they're a couple of kids together. That seeing them, seeing them together, there's a book about it. It's really neat. So that'll come to me. But um, <clears throat> so if you want to see or experience or have a sense of what um, what Buddhism in its contemporary experience is the Dalai Lama. I recommend him. Um, there are all kinds of Buddhists in all kinds of countries now. Uh, I have, there's a meditation center close to me in St. Matthew's where I live. Um, and sometimes I go walking in the neighborhood and I see these monks in their orange robes walking around the neighborhood just out for a walk too we greet each other warmly and that's about it but it's they're around there's um <clears throat> are they used know. like like in the back like kind of covered up like they usually have like a lot of trees around them because i think it's the one out by fort like out like like out there like by chamberlain lane and stuff because uh -huh. it's like it, it's a church like in the, it's like randomly in the middle of the neighborhood, but it's like mm. this church back, but it's like a lot of trees around it. You have to like look to see like what kind of building it is. It's yeah. kind of it's like in the back. Like you can't I, haven't, I haven't seen that one, but yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah. We have mosques and we have Hindu temples and we have Buddhist meditation centers or or temples. Um, a lot in Louisville, in Louisville. It's it is a diverse world we're living in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, check it out. Uh, so, questions, comments, anything you're puzzling about about Buddhism, we can we can talk about. Not that I have all the answers, but I've mm -hmm. I've probably read ahead but ahead of you a little bit anyway. Mm -hmm. I um, I have uh, 10 brothers and sisters and my youngest brother was born. I guess my mom was in her, she was 40 when she had him. And he ended up with the name Buddha because my mom, my, well, my dad named my mom this because her, she was so, she, he said that she looked like the statue, Buddha. Hmm. But when I was reading, I had to call one of my siblings, my older sister, uh, the other day, yesterday, and I said, you know, I'm so glad that, you know, it's, it's, it's a tradition. I forget the word that I used to describe, but it talked about uh, Buddha's mom and how once she, you know, the legend is stated, I don't know if legend is the right word, 
but once she gave gave birth seven days she died because her her what she, her purpose was done once you give birth to a buddha you no longer have and i'm like i'm so glad that was just a legend <laughs> so yeah. she thought that was pretty funny <laughs> her last like, wow. <laughs> I learned a lot. I learned a lot from this. I, I connected in in so many ways to the reading. Good. Glad to hear that. <clears throat> Anybody else have questions or comments about it? Well, I want to I want us to have a shot at um, doing a little meditation like we did last week with yoga. Only this time a Buddhist meditation. I want to share my screen. So, um, in the middle of this number eight here, and the on the sharing my screen, <clears throat> Buddhist, <clears throat> excuse me, yeah. use um, <clears throat> what they call mantras. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm sorry, repeated songs or prayers to keep their minds focused. You know, we, we talked about it last week about focusing on your breath. They use these words to focus and keep themselves focused on the things. And the four pieces of this mantra that uh, we, we'll try it for about three or four minutes, just, just say to yourself, I'll say it for a few times and then you can say it to yourself. May I be happy. May I be free of suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others, and may I be at peace. Um, and happiness, free of suffering, compassion, and be at peace. Are the true four thing. things that yeah. we'll repeat very nicely. Happiness is about uh, becoming becoming free from. <coughs> um, the, the concerns of the world. Free of suffering is about escape from expectations and desires. <clears throat> Compassion for myself is acknowledging that I am completely worthy of care and love as is each other person in the world that I encounter. I have compassion for that, for myself and others. And then be at peace is may I find the enlightenment and, and happiness that comes from this way of being. Um, questions about that before I offer us to start it? So um, get in a seat in a comfortable position, again, probably with your feet uh, flat on the ground, back straight. Uh, Let's take a couple of deep breaths in and out. In and out. Breathing in concerns and cares and breathing out the sense of care and love for all and for everything for the world. Keep breathing. And then say to yourself or say with me this little mantra. We'll say it slowly. May I be happy. Yeah, be happy. May I be free of May suffering. I be free of suffering. May I have compassion, I have compassion for myself and others. And others. 
May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free of suffering. May I have be have compassion for myself. For myself and others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be happy. May I be free of suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others. May I be at peace. Now go ahead and do that for yourself for a couple more minutes. May I be happy. May I be free of suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. Free from suffering. May I have compassion for others and myself. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I have compassion for myself and for others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I have compassion for myself and others. May I be at peace. May I be happy. May I be free from suffering. May I have compassion for others. Myself. May I be at peace. And then breathe in and out comfortably, relax, allow yourself to feel what you're feeling. And when you're ready, open your eyes and come back to, to us.
So would you be willing to share a little bit about how that was for you? For me, it was just what I needed. I can say I own a sense of happiness. Hmm. I feel uh, in control of my suffering. For me personally, I finally feel like I deserve compassion. <laughs> oh, I, I, yeah, I'm a compassionate person. I'm not so compassionate with myself. Okay. And uh, right now I have peace. This makes me want to work harder. Amen. My, uh, my piece is being effective and efficient. Mm -hmm. So I just try to get things done. That's when I feel like when I can get some good work done, I feel like I did it right. And I know it's like going to make a difference. And I'm at peace. Nice. <clears throat> Indeed. What we know in, in general about religion as a sense of how do we make sense of our lives and how do we live our lives better, which is what all religions are about in a way. <clears throat> and we know that human beings are very distractible. <laughs> we lose focus, as you're talking about, Tyree. You, you, you lose a sense of sticking with it and doing what I know I, I want to be doing. Uh, you lose that sense of compassion for yourself because of the, all the expectations I lay on myself. And the reason for the prayer or discipline rituals of all the religions, and each of them has its own, is to keep reminding us of that bigger sense of who we're supposed to be and what we could become. So we need worship and prayer or meditation and reading and time with others to remind us this is what this is what life's about. I'm not meant to do this all by myself. I need I need lots of ways to keep myself <clears throat> in in the way I need to be. Otherwise, I get pulled side, pulled away, tempted, distracted. <clears throat> so that's the whole point of all of the rich rituals and worship of all religions. This is simply to keep us on track of connected with the way the world, the universe, God intends us to be. And that's the sermon for this morning. <laughs> yeah. And that brings us to the end of studying specific religions through this semester. Uh, the next two weeks, we're preparing for the final exam. Um, I will give you on Monday some, some ways to report review and prepare yourself um, and Wednesday we can start talking about that uh, the following week we'll also do some more of that uh, and this will be a way of pulling everything together um, <clears throat> it might also be good if some of you would be willing to share some of your term papers which are by the way due today um, and that we can all learn from each other what we've we've learned about these things. Um, you mean like share like next week? Next week or the following week, right? Okay. Talk just spend you know uh, some time in class just telling us what you saw and learned and so we all kind of learn from you. You can teach us. 
Um, so that's that's what's happening next week. Uh, and I want to tell you, I've, I've just gotten my marching papers for spring, spring classes. I'm going to be offering two classes I haven't taught here before. Uh, the interesting one might be useful for those to those of you who are not religion majors, but you need to get a, the either uh, uh, general uh, requirements in our religion classes. History of Christianity 2 is the second of two classes in the history. Um, and I, I teach, I've been teaching history of Christianity 1 for quite a while. Um, but spring, and it will be the last 500 years of Christian history. Um, and it, it'll be I'm really working at creating it as an Afrocentric emphasis on the history of the Christian faith. So we'll start with the colonialist empires of the 14, 1500s, the Protestant Reformation, which is where a lot of our current religions are shaped from, to the Atlantic slave trade, the identification of Christianity with the capitalist slave economy in the United States, and mm -hmm. focus on the evolution of the black churches in America. That's kind of, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm also going to be teaching a class in church leadership called Conflict Ministry, which if you're not intending and, and focusing on religious professionals may or may not, but, but I, have a, I have written a book on church conflict and I'm going to be teaching out of that and really looking forward to that one as well. So as you're getting ready to, to register in the next few weeks, think about that. Uh, any other questions or comments? This class was right on time. Yeah. Topic, um, and I, I walk away not only with that mantra, adding to the mantras that I already practice, but um, I, I um, have my dry erase board and there are things when I want to accomplish or get to, I, you know, put the information there. So my, my new thing is let go and detach. And then progress never goes in a straight line. These are going to be my focus mm -hmm. points for the next, I don't know, week or two. Good. Uh, so thank you for sharing. Happy to have, have something you found worthwhile. That's good. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, uh, we're back to seeing what the heck is happening in this world as we watch the election results for the next yes. few days. Yes, yes, yes. And keep centered and keep our expectations low. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. Let okay, me know if you have any questions. I look forward to getting your papers. Okay. Talk to you later. Uh -huh. Goodbye. Bye, y'all. Oh, stop here.